In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In today's Gospel, we saw our Lord Jesus Christ healing a man who was suffering from physical paralysis. But what do you think? Was this man suffering only from physical paralysis? What do you think? Was he suffering only from physical paralysis? Yes or no? What other kind of paralysis was he suffering from? Why do you think that? This is a longer answer, of course. But what do you think? Why do you think that this man was also suffering from spiritual paralysis? It is very clear from the gospel. Because the Lord, what did the Lord tell to him first? Your sins are forgiven you. As soon as they let him down before him from the roof, they opened up the light roof of the house and they laid him down on that pallet right in front of the Lord. The Lord didn't tell him, get up your pallet and go to your home. No. The very first words of the Lord to this paralytic were, your sins are forgiven. Because immediately the, saw, the Lord saw in this man the spiritual paralysis. He saw the sins that were blocking the spirit in this man. The sins that were blocking the flow of the grace of God in this man. So that he became also physically paralyzed. He could not move spiritually or, or physically. Now, I have another question for you. Which one of you is completely healthy in your spirit, please raise your hand. Those of us who do not suffer from spiritual paralysis, please raise your hand. Which one of you would like to be healed of spiritual paralysis, please raise your hand. What do you think we could do to be healed of our own spiritual paralysis, of our own spiritual illness, so that we will be moving freely, we will become free children of God in our spirit, in our body, in our whole being. What do you think we could do, because ultimately it is the healing of God. We cannot heal ourselves. I want to emphasize this, that all healing, physical and spiritual, belongs to God. We cannot heal ourselves, but there are some things that we can do to offer ourselves to God to be healed. What do you think we could do to work together with God for our own healing? And Hmm? Confession and repentance. Confession and repentance. Very good, Greg. I didn't, I didn't expect the answer so quick. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to, you know, I want you to give you some hints from the Gospels. I want to give you the example of this man who was presented before the Lord by his friends. He was brought in front of the Lord. Do something about me. So that's one first step to present ourselves before God. I also want to give you the hint of two parables 
that we heard in preparation of Great Lent, to parables that we heard on, on, on the Sundays in preparation for Great Lent, the parables of the publican and the Pharisee, and also the parable of the prodigal son. What did they do? What did the publican and the prodigal do? What Greg said? Repentance. Acknowledging that I am struggling. Acknowledging that I am not in my father's house completely or at least partially anymore. It is good to know that the Greek word, the biblical Greek word for sin is amartia. Amartia, from what I understand, comes from a meros. A means no, a negation before a word, and meros means share. No share. That's what sin is. To have no share or just a partial share of communion with God. Because completely or partially, in fact, according to the teaching of the Orthodox Church, there is nothing that we can do to completely separate ourselves from God. But we could be in a much deeper relationship with God or in a very weak, hardly existent relationship with God. What we could do to re-establish that communion, that connection with God, is exactly what the public did, what the prodigal son did to come back and present ourselves to the Lord and to say, in this way, I went astray from you. And I want to be healed of this. And I want to get into a deeper communion with you because without you, I don't have life and the fullness of life. And this is the mystery of confession. This is the mystery in the Orthodox Church we prefer to call it repentance or reconciliation. St. Paul says in the first letter to Corinthians talking about in chapter 11 talking about partaking of, of the Lord's body and blood. So after talking about Holy Communion, he says in verses 27 to 30, Therefore, there, therefore whoever, maybe I should quote you from, from the previous verse, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Every time we partake Holy Communion, we partake, we proclaim the, the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, he says, whoever eats this bread or drinks, drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and the drink of the cup, and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. St. Paul says, let a man examine himself. Once again, in the Old Greek New Testament, the word for examine is dokimos. In the old times, this was the word used for testing money. Text, uh, 
testing coins to see if they are real or not. Even nowadays, you know, especially when I go to Romania and I give them, uh, you know, some, some American money, right away when they take that, that pen, you know, to, to make sure that it is, you know, real American dollars, because, you know, they are afraid not to go to So, that's the testing. To test to see that it is indeed good. <coughs> That's what St. Paul tells us, before you come to partake Holy Communion, examine yourself, go before the Lord to be tested to see if, if indeed you are good, if indeed you are in communion, if indeed your life is in communion with God, or you just think that you're in communion to partake of Holy Communion, of, of the body and the blood of the Lord, and you are not worthy even to come in. According to the Orthodox Study Bible, when the Orthodox Study Bible, Bible explains these verses, it says, to receive Christ's body and blood in an unworthy manner means coming to Him with hidden immorality, disunity, doctrinal heresy, or disorder, failing to see the gifts of God as holy things for holy people. As we say as just before giving Holy Communion. We prepare for the Eucharist by examining ourselves. This includes confessing our sins and being reconciled to one another in the sacrament of repentance. In the Orthodox Church, this confession before God is done in the presence of a priest who visibly, who visibly presents Christ and in general prayers of confession. Being worthy does not mean being sinless, but being cleansed. It is not legalism, but commitment to walk in, the, in righteousness before God. But many people think that they have no sins. To such people, St. John the Evangelist says in his first letter, If you say that you have no sin, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have, that we have not sinned, we, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Nothing clearer than this. If we think that we have no sin, we make Christ a liar. What do you think? Why is St. John the Evangelist saying, saying that? That if we think that we have no sin, we make Christ a liar. Why did he die on the cross? Yes. Because we are in sin. That's why saying that we have no sin makes him a liar. So who do, we, who do we want to be a liar? Christ or us? Who's the liar? Us. Also, some people think that, you know, I confess my sins to God, the priest doesn't have to be there. This was not the practice of the church since the time of the early church. St. James says in his letter, in chapter 5, verse 16, Confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Again, in this context of physical and spiritual healing, St. James says very clearly, Confess your sins to one another. What do you think? Why is it important to confess our sins to one another before God. I also want to tell you that in the early church, according once again to our Orthodox Bible study, to this article about confession, people in the early church 
would stand and confess their sins to God in the presence of the whole congregation. In AA meetings, by the grace of God, they do that. They stand up and they say, my name is so-and-so and I am an alcoholic. I stand before you today and tell you my name is Cosmin and I am a sinner and the chief among sinners. Together with St. Paul and together with you. But my sins are mine and to me they seem that I am indeed the chief among sinners. So what do you think? Why is it important to confess our sins to one another, not only to God? Exactly. To make ourselves accountable. Because it's kind of, it, it is a lot easier to confess to God whom we don't see, even if we see him in the eye, huh? than to confess in the presence of, of an image of God breathing next to us. Also, every time when we have no share or we want to make my share, we break communion only with God or also with the people around us. Also with the people around us. Everything that we think, say or do affects not only our relationship with God, but it affects everything and everyone. This is why. For accountability, for a real repentance, and for reestablishing the communion, not only with God, but also with the Church of God, we confess in the presence of the Church. In the early Church, as I told you, they would confess publicly, because they knew that I sinned against you, my brothers and sisters, and because of my selfishness, I broke the communion, not only with God, but also with you. And I have to ask for your forgiveness and to acknowledge it in front of you. In time when more and more people joined the church, it was impossible to do this because sometimes the sins of some people would become a scandal for other people or ideas for other people. This is why in time, the priest was delegated and asked to be a witness for the whole church before God and to counsel the person towards him. That's what the mystery of confession, of repentance, of reconciliation is about. His great land is a time for him. That's all I have to say today. And I will leave it to God and to you to do whatever you think is best to do for yourself and for your King, for our King. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen.